Hey guys, it's Tiffany from SuperEasyMath.com and this lesson is provided to you by TeacherTube Studios. Today, I'm going to show you how to find the area of a parallelogram. Area of a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a four-sided figure that has two sets of parallel lines. A square is a really great example of a parallelogram that everybody already knows. A square has a top line and a bottom line that run parallel to each other. Parallel just means that if you were to extend these lines forever, they would never cross each other or never touch because they're going at the exact same angle. The same is the case for the sides. If you were to extend those lines, they would never touch. So these are the two sets of parallel lines. The top and the bottom, that's one set, and the lines on the side, that's another set. A rectangle is also a really good example of a parallelogram. And there are some other parallelograms that don't have super common names like square or rectangle, but they're still parallelograms because they fit those rules of having two sets of lines that are parallel. So in this case, the top line and the bottom line are parallel to each other, and so are the side lines. The formula that we use to find the area of a parallelogram is area equals base times height. And that's just going to look like A equals BH. You're going to multiply the base and the height together. Remember, when you have two variables touching, you don't have to write the multiplication sign because it's already implied that the two variables get multiplied together. When you find the area of a parallelogram, you want to remember that your answer is always going to be written in square units. So you're going to have your number answer, your units, and squared, which is just a little two. Let's move on to example number one. Example number one wants us to find the area of this square. The reason I know it's a square right off is because it pretty much looks like a square but also because the dimensions that we have I know a square has the same length on all sides so if I have five centimeters here and five centimeters here I must have five centimeters on the other two sides also so to begin I'm gonna rewrite my formula for finding the area of a parallelogram which is a equals B H or area equals base times height. My area is what I'm finding and so I don't know it right now. The base is the number that is usually going horizontally on your shape and it's usually at the bottom. It doesn't have to be. If you have a shape that's turned slightly it may not be exactly on the bottom and that's fine. It's still counted as your base. So in this case my base is 5 and remember my B and H next to each other means multiply so I'm going to write a multiplication symbol in between here and my height is 5 again so I'm going to write that in here the reason I like to make sure I put my multiplication sign in between or even a dot would be fine here is because if I didn't right now it would look like A equals 55 and that's not true I need to leave a multiplication sign of some sort in between or maybe even put one of the numbers in parentheses. That would also be fine. I'm going to use a multiplication symbol. Now for my next step, I'm going to multiply the numbers that I've plugged in. So I'm going to have area equals 5 times 5, which is 25. And remember, like my last slide, I explained we're going to write our numerical answer. Then we're going to write our units. In this case, it's going to be centimeters and then we're going to write squared. So the answer to example number one is area equals 25 centimeters squared. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two. We have a rectangle this time but that's okay because we're going to use the exact same formula because I explained in the first slide a square, a rectangle, and really any parallelogram is going to use the same formula area equals base times height. So I've rewritten my formula. Now I'm going to plug in the information that I have. My base is going to be 15. I'm going to multiply that by my height, which in this case is 4. My area equals 15 times 4, which is 60. 
my units are inches and I can't forget to put squared area equals 60 inches squared let's move on to example number three example number three I have something that looks a little different this time what's going on here is I've been given more information than I need you're gonna see this a lot of times when you need to find the area of an object a lot of times your book or your worksheet or your teacher or wherever you're getting your problem from is going to give you a lot of information and you must know what you're doing enough to be able to pull that information out of the problem so right now you understand generally the concept of how to find the area of a parallelogram but it's really easy when you're only given what you need so right now we need to make sure we understand the concept enough to be able to pull out the parts we need so I'm gonna rewrite my formula like I always start with a equals base times height in this problem my base is six feet like I said before the base is usually the number that's written horizontally in the problem and it's parallel to I guess you could say the ground okay I'm gonna multiply that by my height this is where people usually get mixed up a lot of times people want to put the 14 as your height but that's not the case it's actually the 11 your height is going to be whichever number is going perfectly perpendicular to your base okay so 11 is my height and if you don't know perpendicular what that means is it intersects another line at exactly 90 degrees so at this point I could draw a mark in here to represent a 90 degree angle another way that might make a little more sense in explaining why the 11 feet is the height opposed to the 14 feet is if you think of um let's say you know a lot of people when they're little their parent may line them up along a wall and say hey we're gonna measure your height so they say you know at this age your height was here at this age your height was here at this age was here at this age here 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 and so on okay now although this is a part of the parallelogram or in this case maybe we could say the person if we were to imagine like you know their heights being measured you know that this length maybe if it's an awkward shape or something that's not actually their height that's just part of their shape their height is actually how high up they come against the wall so that's gonna make more sense for you to understand that this 11 feet is actually the height because it's coming straight up against your base okay so the thing that's also a little different here is your height isn't actually a line that's already in the figure itself your book or your teacher or your worksheet or wherever you're getting your problem from is actually adding this dotted line so that you understand the height okay so basically my biggest tip to you to let you know which links to choose from your object when calculating the area is choose the two links that are perpendicular from each other one is most likely going to be going horizontal with the floor or parallel to the floor and the other one's going to be perpendicular to that so at a 90 degree angle so after we figure out what points we're going to use and we plug them into our formula we can actually multiply it so 6 times 11 is going to be 66 our units are feet and don't forget squared so the answer to example number three is 66 feet squared let's recap area of a parallelogram the formula that you're going to use when you're finding the area of a parallelogram is area equals base times height a parallelogram has two sets of parallel lines that's going to be just like a square or a rectangle or some parallelograms that just fit that requirement but they don't have a common name like the square or rectangle also area is measured in whatever units squared so it doesn't matter what units you were given in your problem your units could be centimeters inches feet yards miles it doesn't matter but at the end of that unit you need to make sure you write a little two which is representing squared and sometimes you will be given more information that you need 
So just be sure to only use the height and the base of the object. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and if this video helped you out, don't forget to like it and subscribe.